All right, let's bring you up to speed what we know as we speak. Within the last hour, twin explosions at the Brussels airport that's leaving a number of people dead. The, uh, the debris is still being cleared. The authorities have raised Brussels uh, terror attacks to the highest level ever. The reports that the metro lines in the city, the metro lines being closed and the markets now heading south across Europe. The French market down about 1%. The German market, that's the biggest market in Europe, down about 1.2%. The Spanish market uh, down about 0.8%. The Italian market, the FTSE MIB, does index about 1.4%. Belgium itself, the Bell 20 benchmark index down about half a percent, 3,400 the last time we checked that. The stocks Europe 600 also down by 0.8%. The shares of the big air Airlines within the region are also suffering as we speak. Air France KLM down 4.2%. The parent company of British Airways down about 4, 3.9%. And Lufthansa Airlines down, shares down 4%. That's the story as we have it. This has been updated for you uh, on our news track. You'll get updates of that within the next 30 minutes at the top of the hour. But let's bring you up to speed from home. Nigeria's President Mohamed Buhari gave you a very clear opening remarks yesterday at the two-day National Economic Council meeting. He says the country needs practical, viable solutions and recommendations to chart a curse for the nation in this turbulent domestic and international um, economic environment. The president says everybody agrees about the problems of the country, but the solutions are naturally divergent. Let's move on. The National Assembly Business Roundtable also waiting on the state of the economy, on the country's competitiveness, ease of doing business, and the cost of doing business in Africa's largest economy and number one oil producer. Today, we're counting down to the final hours of the central bank's monetary policy decision. That will be between 2 and 2.30 in the afternoon. So how are we doing as far as journalists reports in a depressed economy? Let's bring in the CEO of the Center for Financial Journalism, a journalist of repute for almost more than two decades, Ray Echeberry, live here in the studio. Good morning, Ray. Good morning. Thanks for coming through. Good morning, I appreciate Good morning. seeing you Thanks. here. Now, so let's go straight to the key issue. What is the role of journalists reporting the depressed economy? The job of a financial journalist is to explain business, to explain finance, to explain money, how money goes around, or sometimes how money doesn't go around. So in a depressed economy, the journalist, especially the financial journalist, should be telling you what is happening, why the money is not going around, because that's what you see in a depressed economy. The money we don't go around. Your experience in about two decades or more, what does it tell you about how this job is being done, reporting the state of the Nigeria's economy? I think financial journalists are in, in our own uh, uh, climb have been trying, but they are not doing enough. We need to do more. And uh, the reason why they are not doing enough is because uh, they are not getting enough training. I mean, it's just like you buy a matchet today or a knife, I mean, uh, with time, it gets blunt, so you need to sharpen it. So the journalists need to be trained and retrained. And it's only when you do that, that the financial journalists will be able to deliver. And that is why we have come out with the Center for Financial Journalism, so that to give, to give financial journalists that skill and that knowledge they need to have to be able to deliver on their job. Is it just about training? It's also about research. Because what we're uh, seeing in this country now is that I think there's a, a little we are doing at the, at the various levels about research. That is why we are, it's almost guesswork at all levels, at the state level, at the federal level. And the, but, but let me tell you, what drives most economies is research. You don't just come out and then begin to guess this one will happen and this one will not happen. Just like what is happening today. In the, in the crude oil market. Do you know we are relying on what, for instance, Stan Chart uh, tells us, what Goodman Sachs tells us, but what of our own people? What are we saying? What are we seeing today, tomorrow, and the uh, day after in, in the oil market? What are we seeing? What are our own researchers doing? 
What are they finding? For instance, the rebound that we're seeing, is it going to last? How long is it going to last? And all that. Somebody should be able to tell us. And it's only when you do the research that you'll be able to come up with some of these uh, with some of these answers. In, in, uh, in the case of the day-to-day -day business, financial journalism or reporting, sometimes politics weigh in very heavily. Sometimes some economic issues become politicized. So what's the role of journalists in such a situation? Yeah, the, w what it means is that you need to go and do your own independent work. Don't Possibly you close your ears to those politicking and all that and go and do your own in-depth studies of what is happening. Because every issue, especially in our own climb, is politicized. So but if you are able to do your own in-depth studies of what is happening, what is causing a particular problem and all that, you'll be able to do very fine report that everybody will say, hey, this is good. That's that would be totally different from what every other person is saying, the politician is saying, what uh, any other person is saying. Who really do we owe what we do? The government or the people? The people, of course. It's the people. Because, I mean, you, you are not writing for the government. Or you are not reporting to the government. Your audience is the people. They are the people that will benefit from whatever you write or whatever you report. So. Your target is the people. But then, if you are prescribing some policy uh, measures and all that, of course, the government has to benefit. And somehow, some way, the government listens to you, it comes back to the people. So the people should be the target. We've seen a major political transition May, la uh, May last year. We're heading to one year of Buhari's administration. How do you think the media has been reporting Buhari's economy over the last nine months. What's your view? I think uh, we are not done very well. That's my own view. We've not done very well. We are not being objective. We've been swept all the way by politics. Because it, it so happened, like, just like you said before, it, it does appear that even the journalists have killed into the political programs of some of the political parties. So they either belong here or there. And they are not saying what they ought to be saying. I mean, look at what is happening today, the problem, the kind of uh, problem we found ourselves in. I, I expected journalists to say, look, we got it wrong. When the new government didn't key into the momentum that came with the, uh, the, the, the good election we had with a very smooth transition. I remember that shortly, a week or two after the election, it's just like people were hiding in different places. Oh, they came out in mass. Oh, thank God, this thing is smooth. This thing is over. And then let's face our business. Let's face the economy. And then there was this momentum. There was high jump in, there was a jump Expe in economic expe activities. Expectation. Expectation and all that. But one month down the line, two months down the line, it was just like a balloon. Somebody put a needle and everything went flat. So that's why we are where we are today. So the, the uh, uh, National Economic Council retreat and all that, I think some of these things are coming late in the day. It's easier for you to prevent something from scattering than to begin to gather when the whole thing has scattered. We are trying to gather now something that has already scattered. Therefore... Therefore, now that we have a National Economic Council meeting, the National Assembly holding a business round table, mm -hmm. it looks like perhaps finally the political class has been able to put some things in place and they are ready to move on. How should we look at this momentum that is now being engineered? It's not going to happen overnight. Whatever they do today, whatever decisions they take today, will take time to mature. Even if you start implementing now, you are not going to get the results today, tomorrow. They will still take some time so the before question, they begin to so manifest. So the question is, how should financial journalists report this delay or what you call the time lag in the policy and while the markets and the business environment react to those policies? 
I mean, that is exactly what I'm saying, why I said we didn't do much. By now, we should, before now, financial journalists should have started warning that, see, because nothing is being done, we are going to enter serious crisis. Something needs to be done immediately. But anyway, thank God they're woken up from their slumber. Today, the central bank will decide on interest rate. What's your take? You've reported this many years. Yes. Uh, I don't envisage any change in the rates. And why? Because not much has happened between the last MPC meeting and now to warrant any change. And let me tell you, too, if you are looking at the NPR, for instance, okay, okay let's, let's see what we can do about it and see how we can control this inflation and all that. That's not where the inflation is coming from. No. It's not coming from, it's coming from cost. Of course, I saw it coming. In you, fact, you I, you, yeah, I saw it coming because, look, by the time the Naira was getting to, heading to uh, 400 Naira, 300 and something uh, Naira uh, per uh, dollar in the power market, I saw it. We are just importing inflation. This right, that's what happens. That is why if you depreciate your currency or devalue your cu uh, currency, as the case may be, you are going to import inflation. There's no two ways about We've it. We've imported inflation, so how do we de we re export it out? <laughs> it's, it's not something that you just do so easily. By the stroke, of a, by the stroke of a pen. No, 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 it can't happen. It can't mm. happen just like I think one thing that will help us to get out of it overnight, let me say, I say overnight. I'm not sure I really mean that. Is if the oil price is 50, 60 in the next uh, couple of days, okay, what so it means in that case, we'll be receiving a whole lot of money and the, the exchange rate will get better. Uh, I'm going to ask you this question and I'm just looking for that piece of paper. Uh, the president says that, and, and I think I found it here, the president says that our foreign exchange problems are temporary. That's what he says yesterday. That's mm -hmm. good news. Do you buy into this? Are you bullish on that statement? I can I can't buy that. In the first, you're not bullish. In, in, the, in the first place, uh, that's I think that's one of the problems we've also had. Is like the uh, you H don't H H our foreign H exchange H problems H are temporary. H H rate uh, policy has like uh, uh, moved from the central bank to the presidency, and that's not a, a very good thing for the country. So you, you don't think the president should speak? More on foreign No, 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 no. You should leave the central bank to, to do that. Therefore, yeah. So the central bank is going to speak. The central bank governor will speak at about 2.30. Yeah. That's about uh, three hours lunchtime. Right. So what do you expect Godwin Emefile to say? I expect him to say that, oh, we are leaving NPR at 11. We are leaving uh, CR, CRR at 20. We are leaving uh, liquidity ratio issue at 30. 30. Because if you do anything about those you may not achieve much the issue the main problem is the coming foreign is foreign exchange so where do you think we should do we should devaluate we should do something we should depreciate what, what, what I, I, I also believe that before now before now the central bank or the government general should have been able to do independent story to say hey if we devalue what would be the effect and all but if we don't what would be is it is it's a poli policy is like a project so you need yeah. them to sit in the war room and have the scenario. Right. For right. Days, then we can decide. Absolutely. Where to go. Absolutely. It's perhaps not just that, something you just wake up and say, oh, perhaps let's do this and let's Perhaps do that. that is going to yeah. come today. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk to you in the days ahead. Thanks for coming. Thank you so Great. much. Great. And yeah. we congratulate you on the new Center for Financial Journalism, Ray Echebri, uh, the Chief Executive Officer at Financial Center for Financial Journalism. We'll come back after the break. We still got to talk to an analyst from Meristem Securities, the Chief Investment Officer, Oluwa Kemi Akinde, on the Main Street plus the Market Street. That's the final lap of the program. Don't go away. <laughs>